I'm Jared Gensel. I've been a researcher at uh, Center for Transportation and Logistics for, uh, gosh, it's been 13 years now, I think. Um, and I've focused in the last five or so years on humanitarian response and, and supply chains to improve humanitarian response. Tell us a little bit about the mission and the goals of the Humanitarian Response Lab. So the mission of the Humanitarian Response Lab is to improve supply chains and meeting human needs. Uh, one of the areas we started focusing on was in during an emergency response following a, a crisis like a natural disaster or a disease outbreak or armed conflict where people can't access the products they need to survive. We've been working for a number of years with uh, NGOs, UN organizations internationally as well as domestically with the Red Cross and with FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Association in the U.S. and we've been trying to help them improve their response operations. Our recent work has really focused on planning better ahead of time uh, in, in, in advance of a disaster. So we've developed an analytical tool to assess the capacity to, to meet human needs following a disaster. So we, we leverage some insights on how the commercial sector actually can, can set up its inventory strategy to meet consumer needs and looked at, well, for specific commodities, how can we assess the placement of strategic stockpiles in advance of a disaster in various locations. And what do you think the next step for that project will be? Well, we've got a couple of engagements. One is domestically in the U.S. We've been very excited that FEMA has adopted this tool to do its own uh, evaluation for its stockpiles, where they're going to locate facilities. They actually moved one of their facilities recently and used our tool to assess where in the U.S. they should set up a stockpile. Um, but the exciting work is uh, domestically with FEMA is to see how to incorporate the private sector in a better way. They want to understand not just what they can provide as the U.S. government during the response, but more importantly, what can the private sector provide to support meeting people's needs following a disaster and how to analyze the capacity of the private sector in a better way. Great. So if any of our partners in the private sector wanted to become engaged with that, how would they do that? Companies interested in being involved in this, both to improve their, enhance their public image following a disaster, but also to help accelerate their business continuity and reestablishing their own operations in the disaster affected areas. They can work with us to plan their supply chains ahead of time, but also to coordinate with uh, the, the public entities in providing that response. Okay, great. I know a lot of this work is being done internationally as well. Tell us a little bit about yeah. the international work. The international work, we work with the United Nations. Um, there's the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, or OCHA. They're the ones that work with all the NGOs and UN organizations to coordinate the response following a major international disaster. They are also using our analytical tool to assess the capacity of the humanitarian network. Uh, specifically, they have UN depots in several places around the world. They have an, every day they have an updated stock list of which NGOs have which stocks in which locations. And we run our analytical tool every night to see how that capacity is changing in, based on those stockpiles and those depots. Have you had any opportunities to get out in the field and use these skills and, and really apply what you've learned? We've engaged in several disaster operations over, over time. Uh, most recently in 2014, we actually were collaborating with some doctors in, in Boston who we've worked with in the past who identified a need for hospitals to receive protective equipment during the Ebola outbreak. So in that situation, we actually, in our lab, not, didn't just do research, we actually ran a supply chain for several months to make sure those critical supplies were being provided during the Ebola outbreak. And you got the opportunity to? I actually flew over with the cargo. So we yeah. procured uh, basically a whole cargo plane worth of goods. And turns out when you buy, procure a cargo plane, you get a jump seat. So I got to fly over with the goods, make sure the customs were cleared, and the delivery process was put in place. And from the time the plane left the U.S. with these emergency supplies until the deliveries were being made on the ground at the hospitals was less than a week. Wow. So we tried to put into practice what we preach in our classes. Yeah and make sure we can actually execute a, in a supply chain during a crisis. So thank you so much for telling us more about your lab and the mission of the lab. We really appreciate your time. Absolutely.